Okay. This is the coolest thing. I've learned how to make these copper handles for my cabinet, which I'm also going to show you how to make, but I'll show you how to make these later. Are they pretty? And all it takes is a hammer and a, well, I'll get to that. Okay, so this is a cabinet. It's a rustic little cabinet. I made this hardware too. It's a slightly different style. And, um, but isn't that cool? The little latch comes off, the little doors open up. Pretty little cabinet. Now, this cabinet is uh, made out of a used futon frame that's uh, reclaimed lumber. And this is just a piece of cedar, but um, it's a piece of cedar I blew on another cabinet, so I reused that. But check this shelf out. It's adjustable. Okay, the little clips come down. So if I want to put my shorter products on the bottom and my taller products up high, I've got the option. So if you've got a futon that you don't use anymore and you and can break down the frame, go for it. But this is also cedar, which smells good. So that's always nice. And I have it on a, a non-skid piece of carpet underlayment, so you really don't even need to buy the clamps. Okay, now I'm going to make a 17-inch tall cabinet. And I'm going to use a speed square to make the line um, perpendicular, you know, square, like so. Just move that out. And I'm going to use my Japanese pull saw. This saw has two blades. One is for ripping and one is for cross-cutting, which is what I'm about to do. I'm cutting against the grain. The big teeth, watch, oh, I'll show you. They get, it's really hairy to a mess. Look, see, it makes a big mess. So you want the fine teeth on a cross-cut. Now, when the tone starts to change as you get close to the very last saw cut, see it's starting to get lower. I'm just going to brace the board and grab the board, the cutoff bit, so it doesn't all splinter at the end. Okay, more board cutting in store for me, and then I'll assemble the box and go from there. When you're building your own project from scratch, you can change directions if your design isn't working. This is not the case with a kit. When nothing on the box looks exactly like it does in the picture on the box, this doesn't deter you. You keep working, turning completely insignificant or even wrong moves into personal victories. Okay, the boards are cut and this is how I cut them. The bottom goes here, the top goes here, the sides go here, and I get myself a smart little box. Now, the reason I cut them to these exact dimensions, and this is critical, is I chose my doors and I built the box to fit the size of the doors. See? So when these are screwed together and hinged properly, that's the perfect width. And Another tip is, it's nice to set the top and bottom pieces on the inside because then you have a nice clean surface on the side, which is what, where people see it. They all see it from the side. And then if you use fancy little nails like this, little copper nail, which I'm going to use, looks so attractive. Okay? All right, so the next trick is to line up the two side pieces and drill the holes for these little... Um, shelf bracket pins, okay? You can make as many adjustable heights as you want. You can go all the way from top to bottom like those prefabricated shelves that you buy. So let's say my products are generally about this high. See, this is the way to do it. You just sort of guess a little bit. So we'll go for there. And I'll set them in eh, roughly an inch and a half. Okay, and then I flip this over, line it up again, and set it in an inch and a half. There's my marks. Okay, so there's not a, hey, that's not an inch and a half. Wait a second. Sorry, inch and a quarter. Every time I get confident, I'm struck a blow. Sometimes a bitter blow, but so far I'm not bitter. Not yet, anyway, but give me time. Okay, I'm going to just make sure that's absolutely together. And up at the top, everything's golden. Then I'm going to take my speed square and match the tip up with that other little mark I made. Then I just have to, again, 
Okay, now having made all your marks, you need to choose a drill bit that will fit the exact end of the little pin that's gonna go into the hole that you're gonna make. So the way to do that is to hold the very bottom of the drill bit and check to see the size. Okay, so I'll load this baby up. <laughs> Safety glasses for drilling. Hair in an appropriate location. Also, my special vinyl non-clamping clamping surface. Okay, now I only want to go that deep. So, I mean, you can go a little bit deeper, but, um, oh, that's very snug, that. Okay, so obviously my drilling skills are very, very good because I didn't make the bit go all like this. I just have to tell myself little cheerful thoughts like that. Ready to assemble kits are slick and have a finished look, which you might not get if you try to build it yourself. But the one thing they leave out, even if all the nuts and bolts and washers are there, is creativity. There's no you in it, unless you cut yourself badly and stain the parts. Okay, so now it's time to put the actual box together. All right, so the fastening bit is really fun, because look, they've got these, well, I showed you these, these great nails, but you want to pre-drill, you know why? Because cedar splits, it really splits. So if I just went ahead and hammered this in, I'd get a nice big tear in the wood. Oop. Okay, so to drill, there's normal drill bits and there's cool drill bits, and that's the kind I want to use. I'll show you the difference. This is a brad point bit. See, that they're brand new. They're all brand new, so they've still got their plastic cappies on, but I can get rid of that pretty easily. See, this is a brad point bit, whereas this is a normal bit. This bit will skate around on your wood. Never a good idea. Okay, this bit, it's very sharp, and it centers the drill, so the drill bit won't skate around. Okay, so that's, I'm not gonna use that size, obviously. There we go. All right, now, this is the nail I wanna use. So I have to pick a bit that more or less matches it. Ooh, we're gonna be breaking in a new one. That's too small. I don't wanna go too big, though, so I'll, gonna, I'll go, go in the in-between size. Okay, so I'll pull a little plastic tip off. And of course, the safety glasses go on. Now, okay, there. <laughs> you guys just lie there, okay, and take a moment to think about what you've done. All right, so now, eyeballing queen, that would be me. And so I'm just gonna pick a spot for that nail, but obviously I'm bisecting this board, right? So I'm picking a spot that'll be in the middle of that board. Okay, here's a thought, here's a thought. This green stuff is not my friend now because it's making the boards mushy. So let's get rid of that. Not my friend at the moment, a little fickle. Okay, okay, see, you caught me. See, I was gonna go ahead, but what? there's a problem. Okay, so look, back it goes. Make sure the cabinet's going together the right way. Yes, everything's good. All right, now I've got it. So I'm just gonna start it somewhere right about there. Okay, now um, these are boat nails and they can actually be a little tricky. They're, they're copper, so they're fairly soft. And this thing is called a rove, and I already got this one started, and I think you'll see why I did that, because this is sometimes a little bit painful, is hammering these guys together. Anytime you're striking, you gotta go with the glasses. Okay, so try to buy a really cool looking pair, like mine. Okay, now the plastic is my friend again. We've made up its recess, and we're back together again as best friends. Hmm. 
See, that's called a hammer track right there where I missed. And you want whenever you do that, especially if you're making this for a person who's a friend as a gift, you give it a little kiss. And then every time they want a kiss from you, they go to where you made mistakes all over your project. And they know there's a kiss hiding there for them. See, that's very pretty. OK, there's the box. Now, decide um, which side you want to be the front and which side you want to be the back. It's a spiritual decision. This is a bit smoother, so I'm going with that. And then they sell this wood. It's called beadboard. This groove down the middle is called a bead. And it's a tongue and groove product, so there's the groove. And wait for it, there's the tongue, OK? So we just cut it to lengths, which naturally I already did because I'm so organized, OK? And they just fit together like this. So the way you install them, did I say this is the front? Yes, this is the back. So you just start with one piece. Actually, you should dry fit them all so that you know that you um, are centering them properly. Oh, is this perfect or what? OK, so I'm just going to attach these. And to do that, I'll use some little, um, I'm in the copper theme, so I'm just going to use these little copper spiral nails. And they're fake. They're actually steel, and they're um, copper plated. So I'll just line those up and then get rid of those. And there I go. Safety glasses. <laughs> now that I've really banged them up and I can't see through them. Great. OK. And you don't, I don't think I'm going to pre-drill these. Let's just see how this goes. Now I'm just going to finish this off with the backing action, and then we're ready to keep moving. So pretty. Look at that, huh? OK, now, time for the doors. Well, actually, time for the door handles. So you'll notice that the doors are cut just a little bit taller than the actual cabinet. You don't have to do that. It was just a personal choice. And then take your handles that you made yourself. Huh? And they're, of course, not the same size, which is because that's why I, I like it that way. Now, I'll just show you quickly how I made these. This is quarter inch refrigerator tubing, like if you have one of those water dispensers in your fridge. That's where the water's coming from. And it's just, it's very flexible. And so you just take it, and these are just some, um, some pieces of wood that I cut out with a hole saw. So you just go like this. See, that's how it works, just like that. And then you cut them off, and then you just wail on them a bit with a, a ball peen hammer. That's what this is. It has a one round end and one flat end. And um, if you have a vise at, at your house, or your dad has one or whatever, and that part right there is an anvil, OK? Little, little tiny anvil. So here's the trick with these things. I had to drill holes in them, and that was a little tricky because it's metal. But it's pretty soft metal, so it went OK. So you just line them up where you want them. And I'm going to use a slightly shorter copper nail. These, these are the same family, but so I want it maybe right there. Oh. There we go. OK, great. So I'll do that on all the um, handles. And then I have to come around to the back of it and actually nip that off. And you might think that would be tricky, but it's not. They have a special tool for it called a bullnose nipper. I dated a guy like that once, but here they are right here. OK, that's what they look like. And you just wail on the thing. Watch this. This is magic. Huh? OK. Now, it's still a little bit sharp. So if you're the kind of person that bumps into things, it's a good idea to take a metal file and just flatten that out a little bit. So it's just a shiny little soft thing. All right, so. Mm, or if you're in the marching band mood, which I'm so not right now, OK? Because 
I'm feeling kind of serious because this is going well for a change. Okay, so looking good, I'd say. Now, the part where you usually run into trouble is the hinges because they're a little bit tricky. So what I've learned is always put the hinge on the door first, not on the frame, because for some reason it's just harder. Just pick a spot for it. If you have an awl or an ice pick, this is a great little awl, you just mark one of the holes on the hinge because sometimes you get the first screw in and it tends to drag the hinge one way or the other. So if you've marked all three of the holes, then the other two don't line up and tears have been shed. So it's just not worth it. All right, and the wood is very soft, so you don't need to pre-drill. Plus, look at the dinky little thing. I mean, it'd be embarrassing to pre-drill for that, okay? There's nothing to it. All right, but don't tell it I said that. Okay. Oh, now, see? I was making another boo-boo. Oh, I'm catching myself today. This is a rare day. See, look, the, door, the hinge only closes this far on one of the ways, or it closes all the way the other way. So I was doing it backwards. OK. In you go. Now, when you're screwing, it's a time to think happy thoughts, because you don't want anything to go wrong at this point, and a foul mood can screw things right up, as it were. So, and also, the hinging thing and the screwing thing is really the climax of the project, because that's the point at which you're getting very close to what I like to think of as a happy conclusion from this point in time. Okay, so I'm marking the other two holes now that I've got the first one in. And I'm going to happily screw these all together and then happily continue screwing the hinges to the frame. Happy thoughts. While it's true that you can fancy up any project with a few little flourishes, you may find that this has about as much effect on your sense of well-being as putting on a push-up bra. Things look a little better, but the gravity's still there. Beauty. So that's working nicely. Now the second door has to line up with a marginal gap so that they don't bind when you try to close them. So um, if you've got shims around, that would be ideal. But if you don't have a shim, um, a, a popsicle stick works to, as a spacer. Um, just break it so it stays up by itself. You, you might want two pops popsicle sticks, actually, because they t it tends to rock if you just use one. OK, then I'm going to make sure that they're lined up just so and mark where the hinges are with my pencil. And then, oh, they're really hanging off, though. I'm not comfortable with this popsicle stick factor, OK? I'm going to ch choose something else like, oh, an escutcheon nail, tiny little brass nail. See these babies? But they'll just hang in the crack with their little heads showing. So that'll just close that gap in a most satisfying way. OK, and everything's lined up nice and square. So now, the best I can do to get this open, no, I, it's just. It's just too hard, OK? So I'm just going to guess. I'm going to put one screw in, and then I'll just adjust the, the rest of the door to, to try to get that gap. OK, this is exactly what I was talking about. See, it doesn't close. I've, I've only got one screw in, OK? I checked it, because I'm that dry fitting type of girl. And of course, it doesn't close. It's not going to work. So. Here are my options. I can either move this hinge over so that it's really, um, it's, it's just going to be digging into the corner of the wood. That's bad, because if somebody really reefs on the door, the whole hinge comes out screws and all. So I'm going to finish putting the screws in, even though I know the door won't close, and I'm going to plane it off afterwards. OK? You can fix anything, really. So nothing you can't handle with a little plane, OK? A little hand plane. So And also, it makes beautiful potpourri. And you don't even need to jazz it up with cinnamon flavoring, because mm, 
it just smells like cedar. Okay, now, Maurice Denoyer and Janice Curry make this beautiful shaker furniture. Is this not cool? Now, you're not maybe this good yet, but you can work toward it. It's a very simple, elegant, whimsical design. It's really beautiful. They do some really incredible work. In fact, they do these shaker boxes, which are unbelievably complicated to make. But they've done what we did, which is they use copper nails and then bite their little ends off. So that's a pretty professional little move that you just learned. OK, so your first cabinet, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be yours. Just kiss the mistakes, and you'll feel better about everything. There's a difference in a girl's mood when she's putting together something somebody else thought up compared to when she's putting together something she thought up. If what you're working on makes you feel excited enough to want to prop it up beside the bed so it's the first thing you see when you wake up in the morning, well, that's optimal. You usually know when you don't have that feeling, but you always know when you do.